of as a hoarder, comfortable with shop machines and power tools. The collar bomber also had access to work with these tools alone and took pride in their creations with dual purposes, a collar and a bum and a cane and a shotgun. They had a violent past and a superiority complex. This profile fit the combination of Ross Dean and Dale Armstrong. She had a complex, a violent past, and he had shop skills. Though we aren't done with Dale Armstrong, I'll now introduce our third suspect, a man named Kenneth Barnes. A witness came forward in 2005 that said Kenneth Barnes was involved. He was a former TV repairman turned crack dealer. Earlier in 2007, 27-year-old sex worker Jessica Hoopsick came forward saying she knew Brian Wells and had, quote, turned tricks, end quote, with him at the home of Kenneth Barnes. Hoopsick had left a message on Brian's answering machine and was a link between Brian and Deal Armstrong. It turned out that Kenneth E. Barnes, who would supply Hoopsick with drugs, used to go fishing with Marjorie Deal Armstrong, hence connecting Barnes, Brian, and now Armstrong. So he knew these people. What a tell. Barnes had spoken too freely about the collar bomb plan, and his brother-in-law turned him in while Barnes was already in jail for unrelated drug charges. Barnes and Deal Armstrong had also been seen driving the wrong way on the highway near one of the locations of the search. Barnes said he would exchange information for a reduced sentence. Barnes also confirmed the FBI's belief that Deal Armstrong was the mastermind. He stated that Deal Armstrong needed the money because she wanted to pay Barnes to kill her father, who she believed was blowing through his fortune, which was money she expected to inherit. Barnes claimed that he was kept in the dark about most of the plan, but he had already corroborated with much of what the FBI had already heard. Other than Barnes, investigators had previously spent weeks with informants who said that Deal Armstrong talked about plans of the bomb in intimate detail. A fellow inmate of Deal Armstrong told authorities that Deal Armstrong had admitted to killing her boyfriend, James Rosen, because he was going to expose the bomb plot. The FBI met with Deal Armstrong while she was serving time for the murder of James Roden. Deal Armstrong promised to tell them everything if they would transfer her from Muncie State Penitentiary to Cambridge Springs, a minimum security prison closer to Erie. Deal Armstrong insisted to the FBI that she had nothing to do with the collar bomb plot, but she did supply the kitchen timers used for the bomb and was within a mile of the bank robbery when it happened. She agreed to drive around Erie with the agents and show them where she had been that day, linking her to several locations of the crime. Marjorie also admitted to the FBI that on the day Brian died, she had gone to the Shell station with her Jeep and bought $10 of gas. Rothstein and Barnes were also with her. Rothstein had used the payphone before Wells died, implying that Rothstein made the phone call to the pizzeria. She then claimed she would provide no further information without immunity, but she had already given away too much information. The FBI informed Deal Armstrong that they had enough information to indict her. Frankly, this is stressful. Though. It's very stressful. So she gave them all these details of like, I'm not going to tell you anymore unless I get immunity. They're like, you told us enough to indict you. So she effectively put herself 